Good morning. It's great to see you here. Uh, we're always glad to talk about Jesus. It's Friday morning, and so we'll take a couple of days off, and we will try to be on here Labor Day morning. Uh, if everything goes well, we always hope that it's God's will that we would be here, and uh, we'll do our best. So we've been in First Peter this week, and we've gone really slow because uh, I've preached off script. I've had the squirrel moments and all kinds of different things. But make no mistake about this thing. Peter had an inside look that that only two other people ever had. And that was James and John, who were brothers, right? Who were also cousins of Jesus. So when Peter writes something, there's a couple things. Number one, when Peter writes it, it still comes from the Holy Spirit. Good morning. It's great to see you here. Uh, we're always glad to talk about Jesus. It's Friday morning, and so we'll take a couple days off, and we will try to be on here Labor Day morning. Uh, if everything goes well, we always hope that it's God's will that we would be here, and uh, we'll do our best. So we've been in First Peter this week, and we've gone really slow because uh, I've preached off script. I've had the squirrel moments and all kinds of different things, but make no mistake about this thing. Peter had an inside look that that only two other people ever had, and that was James and John, who were brothers, right, who were also cousins of Jesus. So when Peter writes something, there's a couple things. Number one, when Peter writes it, it still comes from the Holy Spirit, but it also comes from what Peter saw and how he reacted to what he saw and what he learned from what he saw. So there's the second part of this thing. And the third thing is it all still works together and pushes the message that Jesus Christ is all that's really going to ever matter. So we got to get through it. We got to start to understand this. So today is a weird lesson in some respects because somehow you and I have got to find a way in society to be positive about eternity and and kind toward others, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, right? We've got to be all those things toward others, but yet at the same time, we've got to submit ourselves to the rulers of the day. And don't believe me on this. This is uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, starting on verse 13. So it's great to see Matthew Harris here, Myrtle here, Maureen, great to see you. Uh, Terry Hoffman, everybody, great to see you guys. We're going to talk about submission to rulers. Now, why in the world would I submit myself to people that are clearly doing things contrary to God's will? Well, I would not submit myself to that, okay? But what I'm saying is the Republicans are telling you the Democrats are all going to hell or leading us to hell. The Democrats are telling the Republicans, you know, are saying all the Republicans are going to hell. And the devil's on both sides with a big stick and right in the middle stirring this, okay? So, good morning, Karen Midkiff. Good to see you. Here's where we're at on it. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it to be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. So, what's going on here, okay? Why would I as a Christian be careful toward my, my, my leaders. Why am I praying for my leaders? Well, number one, we want good leadership, right? But why if I know, let's say Trump turns out to be the most corrupt human ever lived or was ever elected president, okay? If that happens, you know, and it can very well happen, and maybe Biden turns out to be that. It's the institution, and I take it right back to your Declaration of Independence, where your 56 founding fathers thought this thing through, maybe it was a divine, you know, providential direction that God shared. 
because they mentioned the providential care of God in the Declaration of Independence. Four of the first uh, paragraphs of the Declaration of Independence talked about a firm reliance on the Lord, right? And, and talked about his providential power. Talked about, you know, one being above all beings. Well, that's our God, right? So when we look at this, we've got a system in place to keep a lot of the corruption at bay, but it's the evil of society and the demonic forces that just make it impossible, right? So why, knowing that the devil is a principality and the power of the air, and the devil asked Jesus to worship him and said, if you do worship me, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. And Satan could have done that because he's behind most of the kingdoms of the world. He's theoretically behind them all, right? Because of the corruption, because of the fact that, you know, take the United States of America, you go out and you work, they take 30, 40% of what you earn for taxes. They use that tax money on all kinds of different things, right? To feather their own cap. You know, you got people that have been elected to political office that never had a job that paid anything. They started with nothing and now they got 50 or $100 million in the bank and it was all because of the insider trading and things that they've done uh, through the system. So why don't we march on Washington and why don't we, you know, pick up our gun and go to town? Well, Jesus said, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. So what we've got to do is how can I balance this thing? Man, it's crazy. And it's it's beyond, you know, it's so sickening, it's it's hard to imagine, right? So once again, how am I going to get this? Well, I'm submitting myself to the ordinances or the laws of the land because when Noah got off the ark, God gave Noah human government. He said, we've got to do this. And he even specifically calls out capital punishment. If you kill somebody and a jury of your peers finds you guilty of that, you can be sentenced to death right? And there's probably some other pretty horrible crimes that could get you the same thing, right? So good morning, Biff. Good morning, Connie. Great to see you, Brian Bailey. Good to see you. So we're submitting ourselves to the rulers, but we're never submitting ourselves to the, um, against the will of what God is, right? And some people say, well, you know, if I take my gun to town, you know, I'm going to show them something. Well, you're just going to get yourself killed. And then, you know, that's the end of it. Now, if in the power of God, God tells you to make a stand for something, you need to make a stand for something, right? Because here's what's going on. There are people dying all over the world for the cause of Jesus Christ. The persecution is severe. The tribulation is all about the persecution of the Jewish people. But at the same time, God opens their eyes and 144,000 of them are sealed to go and preach the gospel, right? So there's all this stuff that's that's about to happen. Will it happen in my lifetime? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it happens in a thousand years. See, my lifetime ends. My chances of going to heaven or going to hell end. I'm either going one place or I'm going the other. We've had the lesson in Luke 16, 19, where the rich man woke up in hell and he looked up. He saw Lazarus being comforted in Abraham's bosom. <clears throat> and he said, oh, I made a mistake here. But it was too late. Okay, so be careful. So let's go a little further. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So by well-doing is where this thing is at. There is enough good work to be done. There is enough work in general to be done. Take school teaching, for example, right? I'm trying to help out a little bit. Am I the best math teacher that ever existed? No. But I'm better than nothing. I'm better than them sitting in the class and nobody coming, right? Or a sub covering that doesn't know anything about math. At least I do know something about it, right? So I'm trying to help. You know, lots of people could be helping. And what's going on here in the world today <clears throat> is nobody's trying to help anybody but themselves. And what we don't understand, we don't register to vote because it's all crooked and we don't care. Well, you better wake up and start caring. Well, one candidate is no better than another. That may be true, okay? But we still have to do our part. God's asking us to do our part, and that's where this lesson started, <clears throat> was submit yourselves to every ordinance of man 
for the Lord's sake, whether it be to a king or as a supreme or as to a governor, okay, or unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. See, there is a punishment for evildoers. When I let your kid get away with murder in the classroom, one day they're going to be out in society with no regard for right and wrong. See? So the devil is once again stirring in the education system, right? Lots of depression from the teachers, lots of depression from the students, right? Because of the COVID and because of missing out on a year of school and a missing, you know, all these things, you know, ha have created this craziness, okay? But what do we do? Do we march on Washington? Or do we demand, you know, because it's not, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, e Ephesians chapter 6. We're wrestling against uh, principalities and powers of the air. There is a demonic force led by Satan and his demons that is active in the world today. And it continues to grow in activity and it keeps getting more severe, right? And and more heartbreaking things happen because now we're into a second and third generation of people that have no idea about Jesus. They have no idea why all those crazy people go on Sunday morning down here to church. No idea. So let's go a little further. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but also as the servant of God. Hold on, let me back up to 15. For so is the will of God. Man, I want to know the will of God, don't you? Verse 15, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. See, if you just do good stuff, right, and you abstain from all appearances of evil, and you don't get into the gossip, and you don't get into all the craziness that's going on out there, and you don't throw a, a, a gallon of gas, you know, on some of these political fires, you don't get into the discretion of how good Trump is or how good Biden is, you just go and you vote, right? Or you sign up and you run for office, and you clean up what you can clean up, right? You get your message out. That's what this thing is all about. <clears throat> because you're going to put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Listen, if everybody understood what we were doing this morning, there would be 50 million people on this Sunday school class, right? Why? Because we're given a real simple version or a real simple presentation of what Jesus wants for us. He wants us to realize that God died for us in the form of a man, Jesus Christ. He wants us to understand we're sinners. He wants us to understand the wages of sin is death, but he also gets down there to a point where he wants us to know that we have eternal life. See, there's no secret that God wants to keep from us in regard to living forever. See, he's not withheld anything. Now, can I tell you how many bricks are in the New Jerusalem or, you know, how many collars over the 12 gates, you know, uh, on the pyramid coming down from, uh, from heaven on the new heaven and new earth? I have no clue. And I don't need to know that. There's a lot of people that are that are gagging over the details of the Bible when there's these big, bold points that will help you get where you need to be. Let's go a little further. So, put to, uh, to put to silence the ignorance of fully men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. So, I could theoretically say, look, you know... I'm just going to be a little bit evil here because I read that Bible. The Bible says I'm going to live forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go start taking out people. Well, if somebody would have done that when the Apostle Paul was persecuting the church and somebody would have killed the Apostle Paul, where would we have been? Because, see, a lot of times we say, well, God would have just raised up somebody else. But you got to understand, you are something very special to God. There's nobody else going to be Biff Yeager for Jesus Christ. There's nobody else going to be Tony Smith for Jesus Christ, right? There's nobody else going to be Brian Bailey. There's nobody else going to be Connie, right? There's nobody else going to be Maureen. Maureen made a great post this morning about identifying with Jesus Christ. I'm going to identify with Jesus Christ till I see him face to face with some of the post, right? What does it all mean? Well, listen, 
if I start trying to fight somebody, did you ever go through a spell in your life where you thought you was tough and you wanted to fight somebody? And then finally, somebody got tired of hearing it and busted you in the mouth. And then you realized, man, I'm not a fighter, right? Have, am I the only one that's ever done something that stupid? You know, because I've done some stupid things. But it's the same type of thing here. Listen, you and I as Christians, man, we've got the liberty. So I don't have the liberty or the freedom to go out here and just be a raving lunatic. There's a lot of people that, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and I'm being persecuted because, you know, uh, because I'm a Christian. No, you're being persecuted because you're way too involved in your politics, and politics is really here, and your Jesus is down here, so you play the persecution card. And this verse will put that to, you know, damper that down a little bit, because what's the deal, okay? The deal is don't use your liberty or your freedom for evil as a cloak. A cloak is covering something, right? So the cloak of maliciousness or the cloak of evil, okay, that says, well, I'm a Christian and I'm just going to jump up and tell everybody's going to hell. Well, guess what? <laughs> when I was on my way to hell, I didn't need anybody to tell me that, Cody. I knew I was on my way to hell, right? So what do somebody need to hear from a Christian? Man, we love you. Man, we know you're struggling. Man, we know you're going through things. Man, we know things are happening to you and we can't understand and we can't explain it. But we can tell you it rains on the just as well as the unjust. We can tell you that there's none good. No, not one. So if I look at if I look at myself and I really take a good look, none of us deserve anything but death because of the sin nature that's in us. So for us to be breathing and hearing a message that says, hey, man, here's an opportunity at eternal life, we should grab that like it's the last chance, right? Stephanie Barker, good to see you this morning. We are in 1 Peter chapter 2, about verse 15. So the will of God, okay, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. If you are doing great work and you know you're doing great work and you know the Lord's in what you're doing, keep your head down and keep marching forward. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Honor all men. You know what I love more than anything? You know, I like to teach Sunday school more than anything. But the other thing is, I, I like to be around these kids because they make you feel younger, right? But I love to speak to every kid that walks past my door every morning, right? Why am I doing that? Because sometimes it's not cool to speak to the teacher, right? But I'm doing that because some of these kids will never have anybody say, hello, how are you today, right? And it's such a small thing, but it's not done, okay? You want to see suffering <clears throat> it's the school system right now, right? And I'm not just bringing this ministry up because I'm in the middle of it. I'm trying to get you to understand that we need to honor all men. We need to be kind to everybody. We need to love even our enemies, the Bible tells us, because we're living in a world where we say we want everybody to get saved. But as Christians, we're really quick to say, you drunk, you alcoholic, you drug addict, you... you obese, some, you know, blah, 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 whatever it is that you pick out in somebody else, right? And, and we're real quick to condemn them. But right here it says, honor all men. How can I honor somebody? I don't know anything about their life. You can be kind to somebody. You can have love, joy, and peace toward them, which is the fruit of the Spirit. If God lives inside of you and you don't love other people and you're not kind to other people and you're not interested in everybody, not just somebody that can help you get to your next level in your career, right? Listen, my career could have gone a lot my career could have gone a lot farther in the corporate world if I was more tuned into the brown nosing thing. And I'm just gonna leave it with brown nosing, okay? But I'm not into that. I don't try to dishonor people, but I'm not I'm not conforming to something just to get something. Does that make sense? So honor all men. Love the brotherhood. What's the brotherhood? Well, I think he's talking about the Christians. Listen, we love, we need to love the people that say they're Christians. Maybe they're not perfect. Well, guess what? None of us are perfect, right? 
but we need to love the brotherhood. We need to fear God. See, one of the biggest problems in society today is there's no fear. See, I was afraid even in high school of getting my hind end busted by our principal because he played football for Marshall. And even when my, I was in high school and a pretty, you know, decent sized guy, I never was real big, but <laughs> Danny Clark was, was loved to bust your hind end and he could raise you up off the ground, I've been told. I was a little slicker than some and didn't get caught in stuff, but I was every bit as bad, right? There's got to be fear. There's got to be a fear of God to get your attention, right? There's got to be fear of repercussions in society. Law and order has got to be enforced in order to have a society. The last time law and order was not enforced was before Noah, right? got off the ark. Well, guess what happened before Noah got on the ark? It started raining. See, it's raining in the whole world today. The Christian is about ready to get on his ark. Man, it's going to be a great day. The Christian is about ready to sail away when the dead in Christ rise first, and those of us or whoever's walking around at that time that's saved will be caught up to meet them, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. It's never going to happen for you if you don't fear the Lord. I don't care. I don't think you can show me. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't think you can show me a place in all of this or a reason why you would pick Jesus Christ if you weren't fearful of hell. And if it's good to fear the Lord, because it says it right here, fear God. And then in the next sentence, it says, honor the king. First, I fear God. I got to do what's right in God's eyes no matter what. Now, sometimes I say, boy, I tell you what, I'd love to be, I'd love to be executed right in front of a million people so I could prove I love Jesus. But then part of me says, man, I wonder if you would have the guts to do that. Now, I believe the Holy Spirit in me would kind of take over, right? Because I think the Holy Spirit would be like, this is your chance. You you need to step forward. You know, they ask who would die for the cause of Jesus Christ. And, you know, this is really bad times, right? I mean, this is going to be, you know, when is it going to be? I don't know. Maybe it's next year. Maybe, you know, because it's really accelerated, right? But somebody steps forward and said, I need somebody's going to die in this circle of people today. I need somebody to die for Jesus Christ. And you're standing in that circle of people and your wife is there right? Your daughter's there. Your daughter's friends are there and they're just getting their life started, right? And you, th and you, th and you say, somebody's going to die in this group. Who's going to die for this group today? I hope I would say I'll die for the group today. See, Jesus died for all, right? Would you die for a group? Who would you die for today? Jesus says there is no greater to love than the man has toward the people if he'll lay down his life for those people. See, Jesus had the greatest love of all time. Why? Because he loved everybody equally and was willing to lay down his life for all, knowing that a high percentage of people are never coming to Jesus. They're never coming. They do not care. They will not get saved. How heartbreaking is that? Okay, well, I just don't believe that. Okay, let me take you down the road a little further. Verse 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the froward. So even the harsh masters that I have, even if I'm a slave, I'm supposed to be the best slave I can be. Part of our problem in society today is Christians in the workforce are crying about everything. They're mad about everything. They're bitter about everything. We have got to be the light of the world during this great crisis. You say, well, Lunsford, you're, you know, you're doing the same thing. You're, you know, you're just telling us how bad it is and how bad I'm trying. I'm not trying. I am trying to scare you some, but I was going to say, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to prepare you. I want your heart to get tenderized to the point that you start to see that, you know what? I really got to, I really got to pay attention here. Because God is on the move, because God is showing us through the Bible just how bad and how fast it got bad, right? Because it's accelerated at an amazing pace in my life. We were talking about it at school yesterday. 
the way that kids are today due to social media, due to the, everybody having a phone, due to everybody's got to get the last word in. You cannot tell a kid to sit, up, sit in their seat straight forward and, and keep your mouth shut and do the work. They will not stop. Most of them will not stop talking back to you. So that tells me that they're used to doing it to mom and dad, right? That would not have worked at my house, right? Okay. So servants, even if I'm a servant, even if I'm a slave, I'm told even if my master is harsh, I've got to do the right thing. Why? Because a dead, a dead sacrifice for the Lord is not helping the Lord's cause. We are supposed to be a living sacrifice for Jesus Christ. So hard times are going to come. People are not going to get, uh, <clears throat> people are not going to, uh, Hard times are going to come. I forgot my thought on that. You're going to lose some things as a Christian trying to live around bitter people, jealous people, and all those things. <clears throat> I've been fired from a couple jobs that I really didn't want to be fired from, right? Oh, I let on like it didn't care, but like everybody, I needed some money, you know? But the last thing I'm going to do is, you know, I'm just not going to, let somebody run over me. Now, I may end up living on your front porch one day, Pam and Butch, but I'm just not, you know, I'm just not going to do it. Now, I might, you know, it, it's hurt me at times, but at the same time, you know, I hope I've got that same hard-headedness that Peter had, and I hope when it comes my time to pay the ultimate price, whatever it may be for Jesus, that I'm willing to lay it down for Jesus. That's what I'm hoping, okay? So, have I been always been as uh, uh, as subject to my master as I should have in my workplaces? Not always, right? Because I've had some dandy bosses. Now, I've had a couple good ones too, right? But anyway, another story. For this is thank thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endureth grief for suffering wrongly. So it's thankfully, it's a, it's a blessing Jesus said, they hate me, they're going to hate you. They're going to kill me. They may kill you, but they're going to try to persecute you. And if you're persecuted because somebody sees this program and says, I'm going to hurt Brooke Lunsford, I'm going to do something against Brooke because he's talking about Jesus, that's pretty scary. You know, I'm not going to do business with Lunsford because I'm afraid if I call him and ask him to show me a house or I ask him about insurance, first thing he's going to launch into is Jesus. And I don't want to hear it. That's a blessing to me. See, every time somebody looks at me and says, I should call Lunsford, but oh, man, I know he's going to preach to me. Because see, that's not part of it. If we watch the lesson here today, part of it is sometimes just living it out in front of somebody else. You know, oh, do I want to help everybody? Absolutely. I'd love to help everybody. First of all, I'd love to help you get to Jesus, right? Then if you got something else on your mind or something else I can do for you, I'll do anything to help you, right? I'll tell you a quick story. I got somebody wanting to buy my car that's a Christian brother. My wife and I are scared to death to sell the car to somebody because we're just, what if something goes wrong, <laughs> you know? And, and it's a shame to be like that, but I've, I've, you know, we've had business dealings. We've had things happen with friends, and, and the next thing you know, you know, it, it just gets ugly. And, and and I shouldn't, you should not be like that. You should be willing to help each other no matter what, right? So anyway, that's kind of where we end today. I kind of, I guess I got, uh, once again, had that, uh, that rabbit or squirrel moment there at the end, right? So we're subject to our rulers. We need to submit to our rulers. Why am I submitting? Because if I go out here and try to get myself killed, there's a great chance I can you know, maybe your calling is to minister in inner city Chicago where the most murders happen every weekend in the United States. Well, go. If that's, excuse me, if that's your calling, go into the inner cities of Chicago. But I'm saying there's ways to go in and minister there without getting yourself killed. Now, should I wear it like a badge if I want to go out here and do something incredibly uh, awesome for the Lord. I want to be a mission, a missionary, and I go into this scariest part of the world, like some of these Middle Eastern countries that will kill you if you say you're a Christian. That's pretty serious stuff, right? 
Will God be thrilled to see you in heaven for doing that? Absolutely. I, I have no doubt, right? Does that call, does that give you more faithfulness and uh, get you more cities to rule over in heaven? I hope it does, right? But everybody's not called to do that. Most of us are called to be, uh, to submit to our rulers, to pray for our rulers, and to go live a peaceful life. Because if all I'm ever doing is tearing up stuff, and all I'm ever doing is fighting, I mean, there's some people that are just purely ignorant. <laughs> and I'm sorry, all they ever do is complain. The world's against me, everything's against me, and on and on. Well, yeah, it is, okay? Because that's the way you're seeing it, right? If all you can ever say is something negative, maybe it's just time to keep your mouth shut, right? Well, if, I, if somebody does something, I'm going to stay, you know, and all that is fine, okay, in the name of Jesus. But sometimes, okay, sometimes the silence is golden. Sometimes we just had the verse where it said, if you will just keep your head down and keep moving forward, and being kind, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness. I don't hear Ray's Cain in any of that, right? All I'm hearing is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness. I'm like, man, I wish that was me more, right? And, and that's one of the reasons I like to come to school because I do get to practice the gentle side, right? Of course, I'm getting older now, so I'm probably calming down a little bit. But... In seriousness, you know, we've got to practice these things. You don't wake up loving people who are unlovable, right? I got to roll, but I think that's a good place to, to, to leave it. You know, we don't wake up loving people that are unlovable. Sentence number two, Jesus died for the unlovable, of which I was one. That verse is coming up. A verse real similar to that's coming up soon. Have a great day. We love you in Jesus. Lord, we're thankful. Thankful that you've got a master plan that's well beyond our understanding. We're thankful that you put us in these positions to do something for you, and we have to recognize what's going on. Part of it is I can't be, whether I'm a Democrat or a Republican, I cannot be beating the other side to death because there's a lot of Christians on both sides and they're watching you and they get mad at you, they get bitter towards you and you'll never have a witness to them. See, the number one thing, why I, this lesson is what it is, why we submit ourselves to rulers is because just like our country today, it's almost 50-50 Republican Democrat when the national vote is taken. So, if I say all Democrats are going to hell, then all Democrats are going to hate me. If I say all Republicans are going to hell, all all Democrats are, or all Republicans are going to hate me. So we lose a great big segment of people that we can talk to. Now, at the same time, there's a lot of people that just don't get involved at all. And I believe, Lord, that you want us to vote. I believe you've set it up through our founding fathers. I believe you inspired them to have the secret vote. I believe you inspired the founding fathers to make a declaration of independence and a bill of rights and all these amendments that were so stout that they stand no matter how corrupt that the men are that are trying to enforce these things. But yet, no matter what the corruption level is, we pray because we saw many cases in the Old Testament where you turned an evil king's heart good. And many times in that Bible, where you made a king treat your people extraordinarily well. I think about the book of Daniel, right? Uh, and Daniel de dealt with the Babylonian uh, kings. He dealt with the Medo persian kings. I think about other places in the Bible where Esther, it, was, it could have gotten her killed to go to that king and to make a petition of that king, but she was willing to risk her life for her people and her family. Lord, help us to be that way. Help us to do the right thing, to do the smart thing, because Jesus said, I send you forth as sheep amidst the wolves. Be ye therefore wise as the serpent and harmless as the dove. So in all these things, right, Jesus is sending us forth into the world. Go into the highways and the hedges. Compel them to come in. Tell them about Jesus. And you may even go all the way to death because somebody doesn't like your message about Jesus Christ. 
but Lord, help us to be willing to go all the way for you. Whether it's through kindness or whether it's through being willing to lay down our life to help somebody else. Lord, again, our prayer list is, is so much longer than what we mentioned. But the broad strokes are, please be with our men and women in the military. Please be with our veterans that have already served us. Please be with our policemen, firefighters, and our first responders. Please be with our schools and our teachers and our students and all the school personnel. Lots of issues in the school system. And once again, there is a system. The system is that, that it's run by the national education. It trickles down to the state. And by the time it gets to the front lines of the school, there's very little the teacher can do. And it's so sad. But Lord, I hope you'll open doors for kids in their education and, and give them opportunities because the light comes on at different times. Again, COVID is coming back around. There's some people really sick with COVID right now. Lots of COVID. So be safe, be careful, but get busy living or get busy dying. That's what you got to do in this life, folks. If you're listening to me, don't sit around scared. Go out in the power of the Lord, right? Now, I'm not saying don't be wise, but on COVID or whatever, if you want to wear a mask, you wear it, and I'll be happy for you, right? Whatever you need to do to keep yourself safe is fine, right? All Have a wonderful weekend, and uh, we wish you a good Labor Day, and uh, try to get some rest. Good to see you, Benita. Good to see you, Pam and Butch. Matthew Harris, thanks for all you share out there for us. Harry Queen, have a good weekend. We'll see you guys.